So thank you for joining us on your Thursday night for us. Um, I'm Darlene Rojo-Wissar and I'm currently the trainee member at large. And then Miranda, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Miranda and I am currently the trainee member at large elect. Nice to see you all. We're excited to tell you more about how to navigate the sleep meeting this year. And we wanted to let you know that you can ask questions throughout. You can come off of mute. You can ask your question in the chat. You can raise your hand. Um, this can be a really um, discussion-based in addition to presentation-based webinar. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. All right, so as I said, we are talking to you about how to navigate the SLEEP 2023 meeting. So uh, I'll be the one briefly going over the trainee awards for the SLEEP conference. Uh, I guess I'll just tell you when to hit next, Darlin, since I won't have access to the slides. Yeah. Um, but as Darlin said, feel free to ask any questions. So there are a few different awards that you can apply to that help to attend the sleep conference or help you to attend the sleep conference or um, provide different professional development opportunities. And I think we have slides on each one of these, but uh, in short, there's the Trainee Merit Award, the uh, Undergraduate Trainee Travel Award, the Diversity Travel Award, and this year there will be a Leadership Development Workshop Award. And the deadline to apply is February 28th of this year. Okay, next. So just to give you a little bit more information about each one of these awards, the Trainee Merit Award helps to cover the cost of registration for the sleep meeting, and you have to submit an application uh, to be, I guess, entered to win this award. Um, all uh, Merit Award winners will be notified no later than April 21st. Um, and like I said, this helps cover the cost of registration at sleep. You get a certificate and a recognition in the SRS update. And then the Leadership Development Workshop Award supports your attendance to the Leadership Development Workshop at, at SLEEP. Um, I've received this award in the past and it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed participating in the workshop. Um, you get, uh, it's a select group of trainees and it's a full day workshop from roughly 10 to 5, uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That includes speakers and interactive panels and small group discussions. Um, and the topics change a little bit year to year. The year that I participated, it was an inclusive leadership workshop. So stay tuned to find out what will be covered in this year's workshop. Okay, next. And then there's also the Undergraduate Trainee Travel Award and Diversity Travel Award. So the Undergraduate Trainee Travel Award helps to support an undergraduate um, in going to sleep and then you get, I think, $1,000 of reimbursement for registration fees, travel and lodging costs. And then the Diversity Travel Award is also $1,000 reimbursement for registration fees, travel and lodging costs. So next I'm going to be talking about some of the trainee programming. So we will have the trainee symposia series, the networking and development suite, the grant writing workshop, the leadership development workshop. So this year we won't have the grant writing workshop because we alternate between that and the leadership development workshop. And then we will have the sleep mentor mentee program, the global trainee mix and match program, a career fair, and a trainee social event. So first, the trainee symposia series, that is um, our programming that includes seminars on the science of sleep and rhythms, career development, grant writing. Um, so this is the entire trainee day. And the trainee symposia series happens first. And those are talks that are chosen in part by our subcommittee, which you'll hear more about later. We have our 
schedule that I'm going to show you next, but to register for the trainee symposia series, you just um, complete that when you register for the conference itself. So here is a little sneak peek of what we are going to have on the schedule. We will have five different rooms to attend talks in, and we will have five going on at the same time at each hour. Um, unfortunately, sometimes you'll have two that you want to go to that overlap, um, but there are lots of great options. So here is groups one through three, and then here are groups four and five. And we will have this um, information that we can send to you as well. So you can kind of take a look before you register. This year, we're also going to have some virtual sessions before the sleep meeting. And these will be in May. So the first one, Dream Incubation, is going to be May 19th. And then History of Local Sleep Theory is going to be May 5th. And we hope to record those as well and make those available to you if you're not able to attend at the designated time. So we also have the training, networking, and development suite in person at the sleep meeting. And this will be during lunchtime, Monday through Wednesday. Up to 30 trainees will be able to attend on a first come first serve basis to also get lunch and drinks included. Um, normally it is not a problem at all. Um, we usually have enough for everybody that comes over. And these topics are, as the name says, more related to career development. And the reason they're kind of more networking focused is because you kind of get more of an opportunity to have discussion with the speakers and it's a little bit less formal. So this is also a great event to attend. And then a tiny bit about each of these other programs. So we're going to have more information on the Leadership Development Workshop and Career Fair at our next webinar right before the sleep meeting. Um, but to give you a little information about the sleep meeting mentor program, so that is an opportunity to get paired with a faculty mentor in sleep and circadian research for the next academic year. And that was meant to help trainees who didn't have a mentor in the sleep or circadian field at their home institution who could really benefit for, from additional mentorship. And so once you join this program, you get matched with a mentor based on availability, and then you have meetings with them and are able to get their feedback on your projects or guidance around your projects. Um, and that's a really fun uh, opportunity. We also have the Global Trainee Mix and Match Program. And this got a little bit um, rejuvenated this year. So this is a networking opportunity where trainees can meet uh, from different parts of the world instead of just kind of sticking with the people from your home country. And that is targeted at supporting international non-US trainees um, based in the US and abroad and matching them um, with US trainees and US trainees interested in studying and working outside the US. So it kind of gives both an opportunity to build a network. We have not pla planned the trainee social event yet, but this is a these are some pictures from the event last year. This is an informal event that is usually planned by the trainee member at large and trainee member at large elect. And this is really just to get everybody connected uh, before the meeting starts usually, so that especially for those of you who are new to the sleep meeting and attending for the first time, kind of will then go in already having met some people and having people that you could 
connect with at the meeting. So last year we went to a beer garden and it was super fun. Everybody really enjoyed getting a chance to chat in person after COVID. Stay tuned for what we end up planning for this year. So I'm gonna go over some training networking and other opportunities that are related to not only the sleep meeting, but the society sort of as a whole. So go ahead, darling. So there's a few different opportunities in which you could sort of volunteer your time as well as network and learn about career opportunities. Um, so even as a trainee, you can actually volunteer for what are called the SRS standing committees, and I'll go over that um, in another slide. Um, one of these standing committees is the Trainee Education Advisory Committee that Darlin and I are a part of as the trainee member at large and a member at large elect. Uh, there are also opportunities to sort of get published uh, through the SRS and sleep through the Trainee Journal Club. There's also the Sleep Advances Trainee Support Initiative that I'll go over. You can look for different uh, career opportunities in the trainee job board. There's also the DEI committee that has is going to be sending out monthly trainee opportunities via email. And then at the sleep meeting, there's club hypnos and the poster session, which are great opportunities to network. So as I mentioned, there's the SRS standing committees. So uh, this is open to all members, even trainees. And these, if you volunteer on one of these committees, you sort of get to learn more about the inside workings of the society and contribute to different initiatives. So you can volunteer for these committees. I think it's open on a rolling basis, um, but I think it's also a two or a three year term. Um, and these are the different committees that you could volunteer for, being the Communications Committee, Conflict of Interest Committee, the DEI Committee, Membership Committee, Pipeline Development Committee, Scientific Offerings Committee, Scientific Review Committee, Training Education Advisory Committee, which is what I mentioned earlier. Um, it looks like the DEI Committee is actually on the website twice. Oops. But uh, you can find all of the information about what each of these committees sort of covers on the SRS website. Oh, next, sorry. <laughs> uh, so one of these uh, SRS standing committees is the Trainee Education Advisory Committee. And these are the folks who help plan the trainee events at the sleep conference. And sort of under this TIAC committee, there's also the SRS trainee subcommittee. Jolene, do we have a separate slide on that? Or should I talk about that here? Oh, <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Sorry, I can't see which one's coming up next. Um, but this is another opportunity where you can sort of get more involved in the society and help to plan trainee day, which is what Darlin went over earlier. So you actually um, get to come up with different topics for trainee day and contact speakers, sort of make connections. And then you also help uh, day of. And in order to be on the uh, Trainee Symposia Series subcommittee, you have to be an active member, you have to have attended at least one Trainee Symposia Series before, and you're going to attend that sleep meeting, um, that upcoming sleep meeting. Any questions about this or anything you wanna add, Darlin? I just wanna give a big shout out and thank you to the Sears subcommittee. Um, it is quite the endeavor getting all of the talks planned and getting all the speakers emailed and getting everyone's availability. And they are a huge help with this. So I just wanted to say thank you to them. Okay, I think we go to the next slide. So actually, do you wanna to touch on this one, Darlin? Um, yeah, do you want to talk about elect and then I can talk about at large? Sure. So the SRS trainee member at large and member at large elect sort of help to serve as the trainee voice on TIAC and when you're the trainee member at large also on the board of directors. 
So it's sort of a two-year position. This year, I'm the training member at large elect. So I'm sort of learning how everything works from Darlin, sort of shadowing meetings, but then also I get to sort of raise my points during uh, our TIAC meetings as well, if I have ideas or suggestions. And then I transition into the position of training member at large, which is what Darlin currently is now. Yeah, and did you wanna talk about the other thing that you are doing with the scientific? Oh. Oh my goodness. Yes. Thank you. And also as trainee member at large elect, um, I'm helping to plan the trainee events at this year's advances in sleep and circadian science conference. So I'm not sure if any folks are going to be there, but uh, if you are, please do come say hi. So we have two trainee events this year, one networking roundtable event, and then a uh, hot topic debate that trainees can get engaged in too. So we think that this is something that we'll continue doing uh, moving forward is sort of helping to divide the responsibilities. Yeah, and we wanted to um, mention here at the bottom that applications are currently live for trainee member at large elect for 2023-2024. Uh, they are due March 5th, so please apply. And what happens after your year of shadowing and doing other activities with TIAC and this year with the Scientific Offerings Committee um, is you transition into trainee member at large. And during that year, you add um, board of directors meetings to your responsibilities. So you attend Sleep Research Society Board of Directors meetings as um, the trainee representative of TIAC. And so here I have some pictures from attending those meetings this year. This uh, first picture on the left of the building is our um, headquarters of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine and Sleep Research Society. Um, and then you get to be in this huge conference room with all of the board members. I'll use a laser pointer. So here you can kind of see sometimes people need to zoom in. So we'll see them from there and they can see us. And you discuss um, a lot of business um, for the Sleep Research Society. And you are a non-voting member as the trainee member at large. Um, however, they still very much um, take your input into account and uh, you're able to be the voice for the trainees during these meetings. And they will go over the um, Sleep Research Society's initiatives and plan for the year and what they want to accomplish and what they feel is important. And so a lot of important decisions are made during these meetings. And it's also a really great networking opportunity at the end of the long days, you get to go and have dinner with the board members and it's a really great experience. I highly recommend it. Okay, so as I mentioned, one of the other opportunities uh, through the SRS and Sleep is actually the opportunity to get published to the Sleep Trainee Journal Club. Um, so you essentially write a critical, uh, critical review of a recent article, um, and it's sort of written in the style of an editorial. And yeah, it can be published in the journal. There's also a new initiative through Sleep Advances, um, and this is an initiative that uh, is eligible through, again, the article Sleep Advances, and it helps to uh, provide support for trainees to get published, um, and it helps to support and pay for open access fees to publish specifically in Sleep Advances. And then another thing I wanted to highlight is the trainee job board. So this is on the Sleep Research Society website. Um, and I've actually uh, gotten a job through the trainee job board uh, posting before. And so this is updated fairly regularly. This is a screenshot that I took, I think, a day or two ago. So you can see that there's currently some open positions for, you know, PhD programs um, and postdocs or research assistants. So I highly recommend taking a look at this if you're looking for a new job. 
And then we recently found this uh, 10 commandments of networking from the SRS that we thought that we would share with all of you just because you'll be attending the sleep meeting. And it's a great opportunity to network and meet with other trainees and other scientists. Um, so I probably won't go through each one of these, but you should have access to the webinar and the slides after this. And again, this is all on the SRS website, but there's some really good points um, for if you want to go and network with with folks at the meeting. And then another networking opportunity, and this is specifically at the sleep meeting, is Club Hypnos. So this happens in the evening, um, and there's a bunch of stuff that happens. So it's a great networking event. It's also a lot of fun. So there's data blitzes that are put on, I think it's one minute, one slide presentations. Uh, there's also free food, and uh, there's frequently drinks at Club Hypnos also. And then the poster session, of course, is another great networking opportunity, an opportunity to get feedback on your science as well. Um, so highly recommend submitting for a poster. All right, and now we're going to talk about the trainee community and social media. I wanted to do a quick poll. So the poll is now live and I'm asking, which social media platform are you most likely to check for SRS trainee info? I think that these things tend to change over the years and we're very interested in seeing what's current. Ooh, so far there is a lot more variability than I expected. All right. So it looks like Twitter has the most votes. Um, which is what I expected. I did not expect to Facebook and Instagram to be at about the same. That is good to know. It's also good to know that Slack is at zero. Um, for those of you that said other, can you share with us what that is? Is that email? For context, we're just sort of trying to determine the best platform to be able to share sort of training information with everyone. Yeah, we can keep going and then you could put it in the chat. This is super good to know. So I think we should probably start utilizing our Instagram again and our Facebook, which we thought were dead. Okay. So here we have our Twitter account. And this top one is for the Sleep Research Society in general. And a lot of good information gets posted there, new findings in the journal sleep, um, different opportunities that come up. We also have the trainee member at large Twitter account for the Sleep Research Society. And that is where trainee opportunities will be posted. Um, on the right here, for those of you who don't know how Twitter works, you can use hashtags when you are making a post. And then what ends up happening is you could search for a specific hashtag, or if you're like kind of um, connected to that hashtag in a group, then those posts will show up on your feed. And so one of the hashtags that we all use the most is hashtag sleep peeps. And so I typed that in the search bar up here, and then it shows you every single post over time where people have used um, that hashtag. So these are just two super recent posts. As you can see, really interesting things get tagged. Um, so this first one by Karen Johnson, is looking for people to contact legislators in support of permanent standard time. Um, and then here you have Math Matthew Horsnell who is posting about a talk by Michael Grandner um, at the Harvard Grand Rounds. So 
I would say Twitter is one that we tend to utilize uh, the most, but it looks like we will be um, utilizing Instagram and Facebook more. And I can get those pulled up for you and put those in the chat as well, because I did not include them here. I put our Slack channel in, but it looks like nobody really uses Slack um, or would want Slack to be used for this purpose. So going forward, we'll probably just focus more on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We also wanted to tell you about the SRS podcast. So this is something that is new for the SRS and it is hosted by former SRS trainee member at large, Jesse Cook. And he actually came up with this idea while he was in the trainee member at large position. And he took the idea and ran with it and the SRS um, was all about it and it's doing great. I highly suggest giving it a listen. Um, Miranda and I were guests on the eighth episode um, pulling back the covers, and we talked about training opportunities in that episode as well. Oh, thank you, Miranda. So Miranda is, has put our Instagram and our Facebook in the chat. And then here we have um, our ins our. Twitter handles uh, for Miranda and I, as well as our emails, if you have any additional questions that come up after the webinar is over. But now I would like to switch it over to questions. I know that's a lot of information and we have so many training opportunities, which is great, but I know it can be overwhelming. Um, I also wanted to mention that another thing that we are working on this year is making sure that trainees are aware of all of these opportunities and how to access them and when they're happening while they're at the meeting. And so what we're going to have is we're going to have access to a little code that you scan while you're at the sleep meeting and it will come up with the list of training activities and the locations, the dates and times. And so that information will be easier to access for you this upcoming year. Uh, Miranda also had the great idea of bringing back something that Jesse Cook did um, in a previous year where we will set up a WhatsApp group and all trainees will be able to use that to kind of connect while they're at the meeting. So for example, somebody can say, I'm at a break in between two talks. Does anybody want to go have lunch or grab a coffee in the morning or attend this event in the evening? Um, so yeah, just a good place where trainees can connect and um, find that community. I Is believe there we're also... Oh, sorry. I, I was going to ask you if you had anything. Oh, to add. yeah. We're also, I believe, planning to have um, not a scientific poster, but a poster of training opportunities at the sleep meeting also. So there'll be another sort of visual representation and guide you can go to um, about all of the different um, opportunities available. Does anybody have any questions for us or need us to go back to any of the previous slides? Can you raise your hand if it will be your first sleep meeting? Awesome. Yay, okay, that's super exciting. That will be great. So what we are going to do in our next short webinar before the sleep meeting is we are going to show you kind of how to navigate the sleep meeting once you get there. So one of the big parts of that is navigating the program. So understanding what the different types of talks are, which ones you can and can't attend, um, and things like that. So that will make 
the whole process of attending for the first time a lot easier. I'm also curious, but just a raise of hands to, did you all know about all of these different opportunities? Did anyone learn about something they didn't know about today? Oh, that's a good question. Here, I'll make a poll. No. We have a question as to whether we know when the next webinar will be yet. I think we're still working that out, but it will be before the sleep meeting. Yeah. Ooh, so it looks like 58% did not know about these opportunities before today and 42% did. Okay. Awesome, I'm glad it was helpful. Are there any other questions? I think another um, resource that I forgot to mention um, is that as a member of the Sleep Research Society, you have access to recordings on the website from previous trainee days that we have recorded. So I can show you that really quickly because there might be something that you would be interested in learning about that's on the website. So you can go ahead and log in. You have to log in in order to access these materials. They're only for SRS members. So just to kind of orient you a little bit, everything that we talked about is under career advancement, trainee opportunities. And then here you can see the job boards, and here it talks about both journals that we talked about. And under resources, this is the podcast we told you about. And then there's also educational webinars, grant, a grant repository, which is kind of cool. If you are writing a grant for the first time, you can take a look and see if any of them might be really helpful for you to look at to kind of get a sense of how to go about writing your own grant. There are also syllabi for sleep courses on here if you end up wanting to teach a sleep course wherever you're at one day. Um, and here are the trainee symposia series videos from 2020 and 2021. And so this is handy because if there are any specific topics that we've covered in the past that you would like to familiarize yourself with more, you can just go in and watch any of these. And the virtual seminars that we are doing in May will also be added here eventually. Are there any questions about the website or anything else? I'll show you one more thing, which is the committees. So if you go to about, how to get involved and volunteer. That's where each of the committees are listed and where you can read more about what each of them are. 
And as Miranda said, it's on a rolling basis. But you get selected in April of each year for a three-year term. And that term starts at the end of the sleep conference. It also tells you who's on each committee currently. And so that can be kind of cool because then you can see who uh, you'll be on the committee with. Some of them might be rotating off, um, but oftentimes many of them are still serving their term when you would start. All right, are there any other questions? Yes, can you show again where to see the list of committees? So you go to about, how to get involved, and then volunteer. Um, and one thing I will say that I just thought about is in addition to the standing committees, um, we have, so these you just volunteer to be on. We have the board of directors, which is where people are elected to be on the board of directors. And so they actually run and um, give a blurb of why they're running and why they want the position and members vote for who gets put on the board of directors. Um, and one thing about being the trainee member at large that I am working on is I noticed that no trainee members could vote for the board of directors election. And I am working to come up with a way that we can include some trainee members. Um, I'm working on that with the trainee education advisory committee. And we're trying to see what criteria we could come up with that would fairly allow um, some members that do have um, a decent working knowledge of the field and who is running. And they've been on committees, they've attended the sleep meeting multiple years in a row, um, that they have the ability to give their input as well um, in those elections. So that's kind of just an example of a way that you could um, contribute to, I don't, I guess, changing things, but also just um, creating the best experience possible. Are there any last questions? All right, well, we will have this recording posted and we will get the slides posted as well so that you have access to those. And we hope to see you again at our second webinar, date and time to be announced. Um, and I'm so excited about all of you newcomers and all of you who will be going for not your first time, but repeat attendees. I hope that I get to meet all of you in person at our trainee social event and at the meeting in general. Thank you all for coming. Feel free to reach out with any questions as well.